Hello, so we're here at Pat Noon's farm, uh, Greenhill's farm in uh, Galway in Ireland and we've come down to the fairy field now. Pat's uh, taken on this field from his father and his grandfather and they, they leave it to the fairies and so we've been coming down here the last few days, best part of the week now, just to explore the place and connect in with the she and see what happens. And there's some incredible places here, so we're going to take you to some now. When we came down here on our first day, it was like any one of these things that we saw would have been enough to make our trip to Ireland worthwhile. There's about a dozen of them. We'll take you around a few now. The old tree that you can see behind us here is a rather special horse chestnut tree. I've never seen one like it on all of my travels. It's not got a trunk, um, it's not got a central point where it's rooted. It's just lying there like a big spider that's crawling over the ground with limbs just touching down in different places. I think what maybe have happened is that the original tree, which maybe was around this sort of area, got struck by lightning and this limb fell off, the tree died and this limb somehow rooted and it survived really well. It's been like this for many many decades, you can tell, maybe centuries and it's fruiting, it's got, oh, it's got conkers coming on it. Um, yeah, it's one of the rather special places and this earlier today we saw flocks of birds disappearing into its branches uh, from across the little lake. You got anything you want to add there Nicola? Uh, no but we're, we're actually, well actually we can just show the uh, the building here. This is uh, this is an old monk's house or monastery and what we've learnt through our travels over the years is wherever there's a monastery it's a very very special place that the Christians mm. I guess didn't want the, the, the uh, pagans to come. So when we stumbled upon it, especially magical, there's a there's a Virgin Mary there mm. that uh, Pat said the religious people asked if they could put here. She was fine about it. just adds a little bit of something to the place. It's been left now for hundreds of years. It's been used as a farm building, but there's a big tree growing out of it. One day Pat wants to convert it into a, a healing room, which is one of the best healing rooms yeah. in the whole of British Isles, I reckon. <laughs> We've wanted to find one of these for quite a while now and it's a wishing tree and Pat took us up here and gave us some rag and we could tie it on and make our wishes but it's a really special tree, it's very unusual because it's two trees coming out of one trunk so on this side it's the ash and on this side it's the hawthorn. We came across this, felt like we were in some sort of magical land didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. lovely. Yeah, these sorts of wishing trees, you do, you do see them around. There's um, a few in Scotland um, that I know of, a couple in Scotland that I know of. Um, but this is really nice, it's on, it just feels really well cared for. Pat visits it, visits on a regular basis. And uh, yeah, lots of folk have been here to tie on their healing wishes for the tree. See what happens. Don't want to go home. Mm. So peaceful. This is a, an old Iron Age fort, and it's a tradition. Uh, there's thousands of these across Ireland, and they're associated with the Fae. The, the, the she come here. You can certainly feel them here today.
be talking about it. So we're sat now on the on a burial cairn, the burial mound, which is uh, Bronze Age, and it's where a chieftain was laid to rest. It's never been excavated. Um, requests have been made to excavate it, but uh, perhaps having none of it, he likes this land to be left and he appreciates that it's good to have some mystery remaining in this place. And one of those mysteries being whether there's a solid gold chariot buried underneath this mound with uh, horses or some other Bronze Age treasure or older still, as these are often sighted on places which were here before. So this mound is a real sort of central point. It's, um, it's got a good view of the area, of course. It's got a little, little top on top, a higher bit on top that we are sat on now. And you can look over much of the ferry fields from this viewpoint, um, down towards the monk's house, the contorted horse chestnut, the giant ash tree that's about a thousand years old. Behind us is the portal, um, which Pat Knowles often has introduced us to a fairy portal where there's a black and a white thorn that meet, um, and the space between them is a portal. And just behind us in the dark thicket of woods between Nicola and I, is a stone that's known as a Banshee stone. So that's um, quite interesting what may happen if we sit on that stone into the evening. He went to visit the Banshee stone for the first time and Jason immediately noticed that there were some red hawthorn berries. We're out of hawthorn berry season, it's another month and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we asked Pat to put them there and he didn't. So that's a bit of a mystery as to where they came from. They weren't last year's, this year's. Little things like Another this just mystery. kind of pop up for you so that you, you have experiences and they can't be explained and they layer on top of each other until you go, go away changed. <laughs> um, we had a great first day on this mound. We came out and didn't expect to stay out, but we just fell asleep, didn't we, for a good few hours with the rain. There's a lot of rain here, and the rain came and went and came and went, and we just lay, got wet, got dry, got wet, got dry. Some good times here this week. Yeah, we've been out here a couple of evenings as well, uh, until uh, well after sunset. I didn't enjoy those so much. It's a very, very edgy place to be, as you see things around the edge of your vision and lights in front of you. There's, lot going on. It's a lively, lively place in Old Ireland. Well, it's probably the most mysterious place in the British Isles. It's a brave person who's going to stay here all night. Is that a challenge, Nicola? <laughs> you can do it if you like. We shall see. Not tonight. <laughs> There's been stories of people that have tried and uh, didn't stay. <laughs> Pat Noon himself has done that when he's been, when he's had sheep lambing or cattle calving here and he's had to spend the night with them. So he has done that. He didn't relay much to us about his experiences during the night. Other than that he didn't sleep very much. He didn't sleep very much, <laughs> no. no. I don't think people sleep very much if they spend time out here. Although we've had a good few daytime snoozes. Yeah, daytime snoozes. It's good, it's good for the daytime. Yeah. Well, you don't mind getting woken up startled every now and then by a sheep or a fairy, who knows. Dragonfly. So, shall we move on? Yeah, before we wrap up now, shall we? Yeah. We thoroughly recommend that you make a trip out here. It's not as easy, it's not as difficult as you think to come out to the centre of Ireland. It's a warm welcome that awaits you from both the realms, if you do.